So towards the end of last year, me and my partner finally listed our room onto Airbnb. And in the space of six months, we made almost £5,000. We currently have 18 reviews with an overall rating of five stars. And earlier this month, we earned super host status. So I want to share with you a few tips with you on how to be a great Airbnb host. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Manners, helping you be better with your money. So the first tip is probably the best thing we ever did for our Airbnb room. And we actually only did this really recently, but I wish we did it from the very beginning. And that was to create a welcome booklet for the room. Not only do I think that this gives an air of professionalism about you as a host, but you can provide some really useful information to your guests, such as general ground rules, how certain appliances work within the room. If you offer any additional services like washing or parking, you can leave all of the instructions in here. We also found it useful to add information about the local area as well that might be useful, such as the closest supermarket, the closest corner shop, transport stops, and what we found to be unusually really helpful was providing the location of a local post box. Uh, as a lot of our guests last year who visited also had to post their PCR test shortly after arriving. So it became a very common question. So adding this level of detail we thought was going to be very, very helpful. We have definitely noticed that one of the key things that makes a great host is trying to preempt all the questions and needs ahead of your guests arrival. Of course, it is impossible to capture all of it as each guest is unique. But as soon as you have some bookings, you'll notice trends in queries and wants. So you can start setting up your Airbnb in the best way possible. And creating a welcome book is a great way to address this. The second tip is to provide basic bathroom amenities. Now, I personally think this is absolutely essential. And as it again shows you have preempted that some guests who perhaps have forgotten certain bathroom amenities, or perhaps they couldn't bring it because they were flying. So we always make sure we are stocked up on shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, and hand soap. I suggest going with the liquid version rather than a bar soap, as bar soaps are not the best to look at after a few uses. If you have these basics covered, you are definitely on the right track. Now, if you are concerned about spending too much money and constantly restocking these items, just let me know, we actually found that our guests do tend to bring a lot of their own products. So we actually rarely need to restock these amenities. But what we do know is that our stuff does get used. So obviously it has proved helpful to some guests. And also make sure you do provide a sanitary bin for obvious reasons. <laughs> the third tip is to provide cleaning products. So a lot of the products we actually use to clean the room, we actually keep in there so the guests can also clean up after themselves. Depending on the length of stay, the guests may want to clean up after themselves, which is great for them, but also great for you. So that way, when it comes to them checking out, there is less of a chance that the room will be in a horrible state. Some of the products we provide are surface cleaners, products for the bathroom, a dust pan and brush, some washing up liquid, and a kitchen sponge. Now, the last two are really important for us as our guests don't have access to the kitchen as the room is completely separate from the rest of the house. So we provide them with cutlery on check-in and the guests can reuse these by giving them a quick wash using the bathroom sink. Also, one small additional tip, try and find cleaning products that specifically say that they tackle COVID-19. I know that this is probably just a marketing tool as COVID particles don't tend to live that long on surfaces and most domestic products do get rid of them even if they don't specifically say it on the pack. Um, but we definitely found that cleaning with this and having it on display shows our guests that we take the COVID-19 pandemic very seriously and it gives them that extra reassurance. So for the fourth tip, it is all down to pricing. So this one we are still kind of figuring out um, in terms of maximizing how much money we can make, but we have learned a lot. So I am going to impart some wisdom onto you. At the very beginning, we didn't really know how best to price our room. So we were relying on Airbnb's dynamic pricing. I think it's now actually changed to smart pricing now. And this is essentially a feature that allows Airbnb to price your room automatically. They supposedly take into consideration peak and non-peak times and adjust the price accordingly to maximize revenue and bookings. But in the nicest possible way, please do not use it. Turn it off. We found that the logic behind this tool was really focused on getting as many bookings as possible rather than pricing the property correctly. We found that the tool pretty much always recommended we put our room on a price that is a lot lower than we normally get bookings for. Like I'm actually talking between 10 to 25 pounds less per night on a regular basis. I would definitely suggest using it more of as a gauge, especially if you are new to Airbnb and you're not used to the pricing strategy. 
Um, but in reality, really just use it as a gauge to determine what your lowest price is, because that's all I think it's really useful for. <laughs> One thing that we've actually tried to do more recently is to think more like a hotel. So we have started out blocking out key holidays and increase the price in accordance to what we think demand is going to be. So for example, for the Christmas period that has just gone by, the room was priced slightly more expensive than a normal period, and it absolutely worked. You can see here that December was our biggest month in takings. And that's even with us enduring a few guests cancelling on us due to a few uncertainties thanks to COVID-19. Now there is one other thing that you can try when it comes to pricing, although I haven't actually tested this, but this is to use third-party apps that look after your pricing for you. Beyond Pricing, AirDNA and Price Labs are a few examples. Again, I haven't had the chance to use these, but a close friend of mine who lives in the States swears by them. So yeah, it is something we are looking into, but yeah, just haven't had the chance yet, but I'll be sure to let you know how it works uh, once I do get on board. Now the fifth tip is to make sure you have really good internet. Now this one, in my opinion, kind of goes without saying, as I believe it is an absolute must. Please do make sure that you provide the best internet as possible with absolute good quality. Uh, I guess the only exceptions would be if you are based in an area which has trouble getting access, like a rural area or maybe in the mountains. Um, but if you are in a residential area, or particularly if you are in a city, you really don't have any excuses. Particularly now as we find that a lot of our guests actually work from our Airbnb, so it is becoming more and more crucial uh, for our guests to have this service. Like honestly, I really think you may struggle to get five star reviews without good internet. I mean, I personally remember all the hotels I've been to that have poor internet. It's something that if you don't really have, it sticks out like a sore thumb. So please do make sure that you have this one covered. So tip number six is to provide other key amenities. Now I think some of these amenities are really crucial to have in your basic package, as I do believe they are really helpful to your guests. So a few examples that we provide are an iron, an ironing board, a hairdryer, a full length mirror, a clothes rail, entertainment. So we provide them with a TV that has Netflix, Disney Plus and Prime ready to go a Bluetooth speaker that's actually in the lights, which is kind of cool, a small table to act like a desk or a dining table, foldable chairs, a suitcase rack, and extra towels. Some other things that we also include, which again, is specific to our room, because remember that they don't have access to a kitchen. So we do provide them with a microwave, a kettle, a mini fridge, along with some complimentary tea and coffee and some treats on arrival. Tip number seven is that if you do have the opportunity to provide parking to your guests, you should make sure that you clearly advertise this on your Airbnb posting. We have off the street parking and always offer this to our guests if they need. And to be honest, I'm actually kind of surprised at how many guests actually bring their car with them, especially for us as we do live in London and public transport is comparatively really, really good. But yeah, I would say about 30% of our guests actually needed our parking space, which was a higher number than I was originally expecting. So offering this will definitely help you. So tip number eight is to try and offer additional services with a small premium. Parking is something that I've already just mentioned and you could give them a small fee, although we don't actually specifically do it. We do offer our guests the use of our washing machine and tumble dryer with a small premium, although though we do have a small caveat on this for guests that do stay for a longer time, we do give them a few free washes. Again, this is some things that don't necessarily get discussed during check-in, um, but yeah, going back to my first point, having this information in your welcome pack with prices can be super, super helpful. Another idea that we are hopefully going to be trialing soon, and this only kind of really works if you are in the same vicinity as your guests, and that is to offer food to them. So providing them with maybe a small a la carte menu. So my partner who absolutely loves cooking is currently in the process of getting his food license. So once we do have that, it is something we are looking to add to our additional services list. So tip number nine is to obviously clean the room and clean any lobbying areas. So for the first part, so cleaning the room is obviously a no brainer. Um, one of the things that you are rated on on Airbnb is your cleanliness, which makes up part of your overall score. So make sure you always clean it to a high standard. But something that you may also want to clean are areas that the guests will see, but not necessarily use. So for my example, on a check-in, the guests will come through our main door, go through our living room and kitchen to the outback that is in our garden. So we clean the entrance hall and the living room and the kitchen every single time. Obviously, it doesn't have to be a very intense clean, uh, but just tidying things up and having the surfaces moderately clear and clean, um, especially in the kitchen, I think just adds to the overall experience. In my opinion, first impressions do matter. So 
even though our guests don't use our house, I think subconsciously having them walk through and see a tidy house that we live in, they can equally expect the room that they'll be staying in will be of the similar standard. And the tenth tip is to be relaxed and super friendly. I mean, having someone in your property can be a daunting ask, um, especially at the very beginning. I know when we first started, I did feel a bit overprotective of the room. Um, I was worried what the state of the room would be when they were checking out, what if something breaks, blah, blah, blah. I mean, fortunately for us, we haven't had anything bad happen to us, but in all honesty, you need to be relaxed about the whole situation and show your guests a really friendly vibe. As long as you explain clearly what the ground rules are in a friendly manner, it really just puts the guests at ease. No one really likes an overprotective host. Also, I try to make the point to tell them that if they do have any questions or concerns, that they are free to reach out to us and we will do the best that we can do to accommodate them. We actually also invite them to a group WhatsApp group that we've set up because we are three people living in the main house. So we find it easier to use that rather than the Airbnb app. Um, we always suggest that they join the group and always let them know that someone will be available to help them whenever they need, which just makes it a little bit more personal. And that's what you kind of want to achieve here. Moving on to tip number 11, and that is to always ask your guests to leave you a review. Reviews are so important on Airbnb, especially if you are starting out. Now, in all honestly, not all of our guests do leave us a review, but I would say we do have a success rate of eight out of 10, which I don't think is that bad. In fact, I do think it's actually quite a good success rate. Now, what we normally do is that when the guest checks out, Airbnb will eventually prompt us to leave the guest a review. And I'm assuming that it, the guest will also get a similar prompt to leave us a review. Now, when this happens, I do drop them a simple text saying that we do hope that they enjoy their stay with us and ask them if they could spare a few minutes to leave us a review. And we also let them know that we have left them a review or we plan to do so either way. Um, we never used to do this at the very beginning because we kind of felt slightly embarrassed to ask, um, but then I realized we were probably just being a bit irrational and it's actually not that embarrassing, especially if you tone it in a really friendly way. Now for my final tip number 12 is to always listen to feedback and don't take things too personally. And I even would actually encourage you to actively ask for feedback on certain occasions. I would suggest that if you are actively doing it, have these conversations privately, because although constructive feedback is really helpful, it doesn't particularly look good on your review page. But yeah, listen and take it on board, as this is essentially free tips on how to make the experience better for your next guests. So just to give you a couple examples from our own experience, so as our room does have a sofa bed, one of our guests who did stay for a very long time did say that it did become a little bit uncomfortable to sleep on there after a long period. So from that, we actually did buy a mattress booster. And then since then, all the guests have complimented how surprisingly comfortable our sofa bed is. Another example is that we did have a guest who is a light sleeper, and he suggested that we provide the guests with earplugs uh, because we do live near a train line and we do have the occasional freight train running through the middle of the night. Now, although I've never heard them, even though my bedroom is a lot closer to the train line, I can definitely see why it may bother someone who is very sensitive to sound when they sleep. So yeah, we took the feedback on board and we bought a pack of earplugs and now provide them to our guests if they need them. Of course, you don't have to take all of the feedbacks you get on board, but if they are easy or inexpensive and you can agree with it on some level, then why wouldn't you? This is essentially free advice on how to make the experience even better. Cool, so those are my tips on how to be an amazing Airbnb host. Let me know if you did find any of these really useful or equally, did I miss anything? Drop a comment down below, it'd be great to share some ideas. And yeah, remember, if you did find this video really useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button, that does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my YouTube channel. And remember, I release a video every single week, so if you wanna keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye.